Hi, welcome to the possibly most exciting video of this section. Here you'll learn how to build your own API. Uh, this is going to be an API which serves the current currency rate to the client who asks for the rate. So uh, this will be a REST API. That means the client, which could be another application, they will make requests to our API, to, to your API, through URLs. So I already built mine. This is my API. So you can make a request to this web site. For example, if you want to get the current rates uh, between USD and Euros, you write at the end USD dash Euro. And of course, this first part. Now, probably this link will not work now depending on whether I'm stopping this this service or not in the future but you will learn how to build the exact API in this video so if, well, let's try another currency rate for example USD to JPY this is the code for the Japanese yen and you get the new rate which is between USD and JPY so from that to that currency that's the rate for one unit of USD. So let's jump into our Python environment and build this exact API. And you'll also learn how to publish this, to make this public right away. Uh, the condition is that if you want to make this public right away, the URL links of your API, you will need to use REPL. If you use your own local IDE, then you have to manually deploy your web API to a service such as Python Anywhere or Heroku to make the URLs public. Otherwise, it will be an, an API in your local host in your computer. With REPL, this is very easy to do. So you don't have to use Python Anywhere or Heroku with REPL. It will be public right away. So let's start. How do we build an API? Well, an API is a web app. So you need to use one of the Python web frameworks for that. It could be Flask or Django. Now, we'll use Flask because Flask is easier to set up. Uh, an API is a small web app, so Flask tends to be better when it comes to creating smaller web apps. So we're going to use Flask and Therefore, let's import from Flask, import the Flask class. Once you do that, you create an app instance using that Flask class. Let's give it a name to the instance and it's good practice to use underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. So this is a special variable which holds the string of the script main. So it's an automatic way to, to name it. And you need to give that as an argument to Flask. Then our API will consist basically of two pages, two endpoints. One will be the home page where we will write basically the documentation of our API. Therefore, the first endpoint will be the home page. So a slash means the home page of the app. If you want to go to another page, um, you could write something like home or, or something like that, but that's okay. And that should be followed by a function. And you should return something there. So it could be a string, but you could also return HTML such as h1. Currency rate API and then write some paragraph maybe after that. So these are HTML tags that will format the text on the home page. I'm just going to write an example URL here for users to know how they can access the URLs of the API. So um, in the other function, we're going to configure the URLs in the form of something like API v1, which means this will be version one of the API. And then I could try something like USD to Euro, for example. 
So let's leave it like that and see what we get on the home page. Say app.run. And if you are using REPL, uh, you need to pass this argument to see the web page live public on the web. So host with that. Otherwise, if you're locally on your ID, you don't need to pass that. So yeah, I will run this. Flask will be installed. If you are locally on your IDE, then you need to install it manually with pip install flask. So pip install flask with a lowercase f. So that's our website. It's running and it's public. So it shows up in here in this window, but you can also sh um, browse it on your main browser. So that's the domain of my web app. Create your own currency rate API. This is automatically given by REPL, followed by my REPL username and REPL.co. Now, if you're locally, this could be something like localhost colon 5000. So it will also show in here the URL. You can click that and it will take you to the same page. But on REPL, it takes you directly to the public URL. Now this is the heading that we added in here, currency rate API. And that's uh, the paragraph. So we're telling the user now that if they enter this after the domain, so uh, if they enter that, append it to here, then they should access the rate for that USD to Euro currency exchange. This currently says not found because we haven't configured this URL yet. So let's go back to Python and configure that root, that endpoint. So we're talking about, uh, again, it's, um, well, let's go back, this one in here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. Yeah, it's also here. So slash API slash V1, and then this is static for now. So to make this dynamic, we want to say, we want to use a specific syntax with these brackets. And then here you say in underscore cur or any variable. So that's the input currency. And then the output currency, let's say out underscore cur. Now, what are these? So when the user enters here at the end, they enter USD dash JPY, for example. Um, USD will go in here. And then the dash is as it is. And then JPY will go in here. So incur is a variable which will be equal to USD for that particular user. And outcur will be equal to JPY also for that user. Now, these variables now will go as arguments of this function. Incur, outcur. So incur will go there, outcur will go there. And then we have access to these values inside this function. So what do we do next? Well, next we need the code which scrapes the currency rate from somewhere on the web. So that we have access to that rate here and then we return that rate to the API so that it shows here in, in JSON data. So how do we get the rate? Well, previously in the course we did web scraping and there was a video on how to scrape the current rate, exchange rate from a website called X-Rate. And I do have the code for that, so I'm going to paste it in between here. So this is the code, I just pasted 
and we use beautiful soup which is a web scraping library and requests so this function what it does is it gets as input the input currency and the output currency so the two currencies to exchange uh, from and to and then this is the url of this website so it points to this website and if you go to the currency calculator and you choose two currencies here, for example, Euro to JPY, the URL changes, so Euro to JPY, and then we scrape this value now uh, from that URL. The way we scrape that is by uh, loading the content of this of that web page using request.get and the URL we pass it there so we get the content and then we parse it with beautiful soup and then we find the HTML element for that particular text so that number I explained you how to, to do this in that video so I'm not going to go into details again here and basically uh, we return that number so that number will be returned by this get currency function so now what we do is we go to the api function that we created in here and then we create a variable rate is equal to get currency so we call that function now get currency will get as first input in cur so that value and out cur so that means the user passes USD and JPY in here. We get those in here and in here, and then they are passed in the function. And then from there, they go in here. So USD and JPY as argument values to call that function, get currency. So we get the rate for that particular exchange. And then what do we do with the rate? Well, we will create a function let's say result dictionary mm, let's create the dictionary like this uh, let's tell the user what input currency they entered for example which will be in cur so this is a string a static string and this is a variable this will hold the value that the user entered usd or euro or jpy and also let's tell them what output currency they chose so a string and a column and out cur and finally let's tell them the rate so rate as a string and the rate as the variable which holds the actual rate and finally return now we need to import something here from flask import jsonify so this will convert this dictionary into json format which is acceptable by flask so jsonify and then here you pass result dictionary so let's run it and see if everything looks okay right so that's the home page uh, i'll open it on my browser so that's the home page now let's try to append that part to the domain so after the domain it will be slash api v1 usd euro enter and that's the results so that's the string the static string usd is decided by the user output currency another string euro is the other exchange that the user enters here and then finally the rate so it's working and here you have the code pretty short code for what it does so again what's happening is that the service now is online is public 
in my case at least because I used ripple and I passed the host as 0000, 000, 000, 000 here so that ripple deploys it automatically and it gives us that domain and so that's a public website and then in the home page we have some basic documentation how the user can access our API so then they enter that in here and then those USD and Euro go inside that URL the URL passes them in here in the function the function gets the data from this get currency function and it, it gives us the rate which we serve it through a dictionary so using a dictionary is a good practice to serve this kind of data through a REST APIs in other words a JSON format which is similar to a dictionary and now other applications can use our API can query URLs to our own API and then get this dictionary and then they may process it they can do whatever they want afterwards so thank you for following and see you later